Snap tools are essential tools to place the objects with the precision and speed. In this video, I will walk you through the snap tool options in the Blender. So let's start uh, by first enabling the snap option. For that, I'll be going into the headers part of the viewport. You could be able to see there is an icon here with the horseshoe magnet and there is a drop down here which can generally enable you to work on several options of the snap which I'll be explaining. So the first thing is I just enable this snap option. I can do that by shift tab and that snap option will be enabled. You can also go for shift control tab to go, uh, expand the options uh, here in the viewport menu. Okay, and you can just change the settings as you want them which are there here. So I'll be selecting that option and then just uh, start moving the object and you should be able to see a uh, simple transformation happening there. So let's explore this option called increment. I'm going to select this snap option here. Now I'm going to select the object. I wanted to move this object so I'm pressing G and X and then when I drag it you should be able to see the object move one grid unit from the point there. Okay. Uh, I can do that in any orthographic view but make sure that you are you know magnifying or zooming it so that you get the desired uh, grid lines there which means if i go closer you get a new set of grid points go further close you get another set of grid points okay so at this point the grid point is one meter when i move closer now the grid point is uh, 10 centimeters when i go closer the grid point is one centimeter okay so let me just zoom out now i'm going to select the object make sure that the grid option is on so I press G and X and then move it. You should be able to see the object is moving one grid unit every time it's shifting its position. Okay. The snapping option works for the edit mode also. So I press tab and then select those grid points. Okay. And then press G X and then you should be able to see that points are snapping to the grid points there. Okay. Now let me just uh, switch off that option and then just move this grid point half the way okay i'm just uh, making sure that it is in the middle of these two grid points i hope you could see them now when i select this option okay and then press g x now you should be able to see from that middle point it shifted to the next middle point of these two grid points okay you could see that every time i'm moving it it's in the middle of those grid points okay now if i just enable this option called absolute grid snap okay now when i press g the points will shift to the nearest grid point. Now I can press X and then start moving to those grid points. But if I go closer, now these are respecting the grid points which are visible at this uh, zoom level. Okay. So uh, incremental snap is a great way to model things with precise measurements you want to build and uh, you can use this tool for that. So the next option is uh, snap to vertex. Okay, so for that I've created these two objects here. In the polygons you have vertex and you can able to snap uh, any object to that vertex point. So I'm going to enable the snap option here and then make sure that the vertex is there. One thing you should see that when I'm in increment, there's a feature called absolute uh, grid snap. And when I switch to the vertex, that snap option is off. That, that feature is not there for the vertex because you're snapping them to the vertex, not to the grids. So when I select this object and then press G on the keyboard, then you should be able to see the object is moving. But when the cursor goes to any vertex point, you should be able to see the object snap to that vertex point here. Now I press G again and then move it to that point and you could be able to see the snapping is happening on that side. Uh, which point of the object is snapping uh, to the vertex is the closest point to that. Let's say there are four vertex points or in fact there are eight vertex points. So when I press G and then move it and you should be able to see out of this eight vertex, this vertex point is generally aligning with the vertex point which I've selected. If I generally do again and then move it, you should be able to see it. actually I should face it properly. So I press G and then when I move it, I should be able to see this vertex is snapping to the selected vertex and that's the closest point. And uh, I would uh, switch to the center. Okay, now when I press G and then move it, the object center is a snap to the vertex point. So there are some other features like median and active. I'll show you that in the component uh, mode or the edit mode. So I select the 
edit mode and then select all the vertex points there and I can move those vertex points to the selected vertex there. So as I've shown you the closest point, I'll be do, uh, selecting that first and then press G and then you should be able to see uh, that is snapped there. And now when I choose the center point, press G and then you should be able to see the center of those four selected vertex points is snapped there. Uh, the center point is basically based on the pivot point concepts or the bounding box, box concepts. However, we have this option called median. Median is uh, average the position of the selected vertex points. If there are too many vertex points, the median will shift to the density of that vertex points. So uh, almost it looks similar, but they, they are not same. So I can use that and then you get that point snapped. And we have this option called active. Now what is active is if I select uh, the vertex one by one, you should be able to see the last vertex become the active vertex point. You could see that in the white color. So when I move it and you should be able to see that point has snapped so that uh, you get the point placed like that. However, if I can select this one, this becomes the active point and then press G and then you should be able to see that point has been snapped here. So this is how it generally works. So you can generally check uh, any of these options uh, as uh, the source uh, points and then the target points are whether it is vertex or anything like that. Okay. So we'll uh, enable the edge snap tool here. So I'm going to select this model and then I'm going to select all those vertex points. And then we have uh, closest and we have all that options what we had there. So I press G and then move it and you should be able to see all that four vertex points are snapped, but they're aligned with this edge uh, because it's closest point. However, if I choose the center, press G and then you should be able to see they are not aligned, but the center point of those vertex points are snapped to that particular edge and you have the active make sure that you have selected the active uh, vertex point there and then press G and then you should be able to see that white color or the active vertex point is snapped to that edge. We have this option called snap to face. I'm going to select this uh, polycube and then press G and then move it. You should be able to see the object has snapped to that particular face. You can try that in the component mode also. You can select those vertex points, press G and then it snaps to that particular face. Okay. Uh, and all these options really work here. Uh, the center, uh, the median, uh, the active. Okay. All those will work for the selected face component as face is a bigger area. You may not see that edge to edge snapping, but actually it is snapping the faces, uh, the, the components or the objects to that particular face. So let's explore this option called snap to volume and here I've got this model which is uh, if you see from the top view it is 45 degrees between these two axes. If I see from uh, these two orthographic views it's uh, almost uh, looking good but when I see the perspective it's slightly uh, oddly placed I could uh, generally see that. Now let me uh, do something let me create a cube okay and then select all the those vertex points and then merge it to the center and then press G. But before going to that, I just switch off that snap option and then select that and then G and then move it here. Okay. You should be able to see that dot is here. Now when I hold control and right click, you start extruding those points like that. Okay. Now this looks good in this view, but when I rotate in the orthographic view, this line is not placed in the middle of this one. Okay. So imagine those are joints or curves whatever you have okay now just go to the orthographic view i'll enable this option and then select those vertex and then just move it okay i'm, I'm selecting that vertex and it's moving it like that okay now when i end up doing that you should be able to see the the vertex point has shifted to the center of the volume okay this is a great way to place joints and all but right now i'm just showing you how this is going to work when it comes to placing any object in a volume of shape, not considering those vertex or edges. So we have this uh, snap to edge center. So any object can be snapped to the center of the edge. So I'm going to select the object here, press G and then move the cursor there and you should be able to see the snap happen to the center of the edge here. Okay. The middle point of uh, this edge line. So which one has been snapped? The 
closest point you can choose uh, from this options like center and press G and then you should able to see the object's center point is snapped. You can also choose the components here and uh, we can select the, the active point. You can choose the median which is going to move that to the center of the edge. Uh, sometimes you know the, the angle is generally sort of not correct for the snapping things to work so I'm going to align it properly press G and then it's quick uh, this time I'm going to choose the active point which is going to do the uh, the active point snap to the center of that particular edge we have option called edge perpendicular okay which is uh, we have edge and there are three different types of edges here one is the edge edge center and edge perpendicular okay so when i'm selecting a particular point let's say i'm going to select a vertex make sure that i'm choosing the edge component uh, edge snap component so i'm going to press g and then snap it and you should be able to see this vertex is snapped anywhere on the edge okay the next option is edge to center press g and then it's precisely sitting in the middle of that edge and the next option here is edge perpendicular this tool will snap to the edge okay and uh, if i see the top view it is 90 degrees precisely from where from that point to the snapping point with the edge you get the 90 degrees or the perpendicular angle for that vertex point okay so let me choose this press g or let me show you with the edge component press g and then snap it there select this press g snap it there i go to the top view and you should be able to see there is no precise angle here I purposefully just slided it but yeah that's the purpose to explain and now I'm going to do this one which is edge perpendicular okay press G and then snap it select that press G and then snap it to that edge then go to the top view you should be able to see the angle there it's directly snapping there uh, you could say uh, why don't you use the edge center both vertex will come and set in the center of that edge which can merge these two points there's no use of that okay we have this option called face project and face nearest it is like maya live tool so i'm just selecting this uh, cube enabling the snap option face project press g and then start moving then when i move this object the cube is sitting over the sphere okay and then uh, when i start moving it it's actually uh, moving over the sphere it's not really considering the, when i move off the sphere it's coming off the sphere the next thing is it's not understanding the faces which are away from the camera the backside faces okay uh, let me choose the face uh, nearest so when i'm moving this uh, you know sphere the, the cube it's it's snapping to the surface and when i'm moving it it's actually uh, moving over the surface but it also can do one thing let me just press g let me keep it that way and when i enable this option press g it snaps to the faces which are on the back side okay it works like that which uh, actually doesn't work uh, for the face project okay it's it's coming to the front of the faces um it's based on the camera projection okay while the face nearest is based on the nearest to face okay so it's it's actually snapping to the faces which are nearest to it that's the main difference i'll try this uh, with this particular object let me uh, come to an orthographic view select all the faces above the sphere and press g okay let me first show you that this vertex points are sitting over the sphere so i press g make sure that i'm in face project press g and then move this uh, vertex points and then you, you see something interesting all the vertex points are individually placed on the sphere taking the shape of the sphere that's a very good thing to model and what happened is the faces which are on the back side are also coming to the front because I'm seeing from the front because it's camera projected um, snapping. Let me try the uh, nearest option. Okay. And press G. Immediately all the vertex points jumped to the uh, sphere. And then when I'm moving it, okay, they are moving. And also the vertex points are, which are on the front side are on the front side. The vertex points which are on the back side, which are not visible to the camera, are also going back side. So they are just reaching out to their nearest faces. Okay. 
we have an option called align rotation to the target i'm going to use face projector option here instead you can use the vertex or edge also if i generally use that way and enable the snap option press g you should be able to see the cone is placed over the face but it also uh, rotating uh, along the orientation of the surface let me just choose the face project instead and then press g and then you should be able to see i'm able to uh, move that uh, cone over the surface and it's also orienting with the surface uh, uh, topology okay so this is a great way to actually uh, place objects over the a uh, terrain maybe it, it it is actually facing in the direction of the normals that's i could see so i'm pressing shift to d and then just moving it over and then you should be able to see i'm easily placing this uh, objects over the surface just shift to d and move it and it's like you're placing that thorns over this uh, sphere just sort of um, a weapon uh, which you generally see okay